Okay, folks, I'm back again. This time I'm going to do a little short video that kind of shows what I'm going to be doing for my next uh, battle rep uh, here on YouTube. And this is going to be a naval battle using the Fleet Admiral rules, which I'm very fond of. Uh, and right now I'm on their web page looking at the, one of the first scenarios. This one's for the Russo-Japanese War. Uh, I believe it's called the Battle of Ulsan. Uh, October 14th, 1904. So we're talking about dreadnoughts here, folks. Uh, and it's going to feature four uh, Japanese ships and three Russian ships. And this is what the scenario looks like. And you can get this right off the web page. I believe it's in the rule book as well. It's got the mission, the weather, <sighs> speeds, layout, the ships involved. And then it really nice touches. It includes the stats, the ship information cards, as they're called, for all the ships involved. And there's seven of them. And that's what a stat sheet looks like in Fleet Admiral. And you use these during the game. There's all its armor stats, its basic stats like name and uh, its uh, length and speed and knots. Here's all its weapons, main battery, second battery, tertiary battery, light batteries, torpedoes if it has any. Down here is in red, you got these sections where you get compartment fires, magazine fires, flooding. You keep track of that in the game. Pretty deadly stuff. And it does that for all the ships. So that's the scenario. And that's what it's going to look like when I lay them out. First, we got to get those ships painted. And see how that turns out. Okay, folks, stay with me and let's, let's get out those figures and see what they look like. Hi, everybody. As you can see right here, I got some of the ships mounted for the scenario. Uh, these top four are the Japanese. And I just used card for this. I didn't actually go all out and use the, the let go bases, which would be ideal. But for now, this will do. Uh, and they're basically, I cut little strips of thick card of about 15 millimeters by 50 or 55 millimeters in length depending on the ship size. Because I want a little space in the back to show like uh, the water, the water trails from the propeller. Uh, but yeah, there's the four Japanese. I don't remember exactly what the ships are. This is the Rurik, Jap uh, Russian ship. Uh, this one I think here is the Azuma, Japanese. Yeah, that's them so far, so they are mounted and ready to go, and I'll texture these and paint them blue. Just a little basic paint job to give them some color and flavor on the on the table. Uh, and I will put some links to some websites where you can get some decent painting information. I don't know why you can see that or the glare. This is Colonel Campbell's Shipyard. It's his blog friend of mine. He's got some excellent pictures of ships on here, uh, as you can see. And of course the WTJ website, but I'll put more of that in the link section or the description of the video. So there you go folks, it has begun. Okay, at this point I'm starting to do the texturing. Now, I, I ran out of spackle, which is not good. So the next best thing is to make my own little paste, or get some tissue paper, like I've done here, and create little breaks, like I did there in front of the bow of the ship. You could just see it. That's a mix of white glue and water and you just take little bits and pieces of a tissue or paper towel even and just flap it down you know put it down around the bow and in the back where you're gonna have the propellers uh, to create some texture and once you put it in place you can pack it down with the watered wet brush take your exacto and actually cut little well don't cut anything but you can actually cut each little wave that you want coming off the bow in this case. Or in the back, just give it some texture like that. You know, that's a good alternative if you don't have spackle. Uh, yeah, so that's the progress so far. I'm also working on some uh, splash markers made from cellular clay, if you know what that is. I'll give you an update on them as well. But right now I'm just trying to get the texture on the bases done. And then we're going to paint these babies. Okay, there folks. they are, folks. They're all painted. The only thing left is give them their wash, and they'll be ready to go. Uh, splash markers didn't turn out like I wanted them to. They look a little bit too natural. Not like actual splashes. Looks like there's a damn storm coming or something. That's pretty cool, though. I'll use them. Uh, 
yeah, they just need a wash, and then I'll put some uh, a gloss of uh, white glue water down on the water parts to make it look wet, and that's it. So there they are. There's the Japanese. And once I put that wash on, that'll make them look superb. Okay, folks. Hey, folks, there they are. That's all the ships and the splash markers all put down on the table. So that's for our Battle of Ulsan, August 14th, 1904. Uh, let's take a look, see if we can zoom in on these guys. Of course, there's the Russians, the Russian fleet. Uh, if I could remember the names of the ships, it's uh, Rosalia, the Grumboy, and the Rurik. Those are the names of the three ships. I probably got them wrong, but yeah. That's the names. You can see the little splash markers. Get down close here. You can see the little splash markers I made. They should come in handy in the game. And uh, let's see what we got over there. See if I could zoom in. That, of course, is the Japanese. Can't really see them too much. Uh, that's the Izuma, the Adzuma, the Tokua, and the Awata. At least that's what it's, how it's written. Uh, those are the four Japanese ships. So that's the ships. And you can actually see them painted up. It's kind of their funnels are painted kind of an ochre color. Black stripes in the top, kind of a reddish brown uh, hulls and the decks and the boats are white. So that's pretty typical of the Russian ships. Here's a close up of these splash markers. They're pretty sturdy too. Turned out really good. Let's grab one of these. Japanese ships here. See if I can focus. They're pretty much a medium gray on their hulls and funnels. Uh, black stripes in the tops of the funnels. They got the decks. So that's one of the Japanese ships. Pretty nice. These are one three thousand scale, and they look pretty nice, folks. Highly recommend those WTJ figures. Uh, so that's what they look like when they're done, and I should have a bat rep coming up next, and we're going to play out the Battle of Olsan. See how that turns out. Okay, folks, I hope you appreciated this. Uh, check the links in the description below for the vid. Uh, it does have some web pages to the rules, Fleet Admiral as well as uh, some of the sources I use for my painting information. And as always, the WTJ page has good information on that. Pretty general information, but it's pretty good. Uh, any Google search can turn up all kinds of pictures and give you ideas for colors. Uh, check out the TMP page as well, the miniatures page. Uh, some of the forum discussions there are pretty good. Just look up World War I Naval uh, Gaming. You should get something out of that. But yeah, I'll put some links down in the description. Okay, folks, by the time you see me again, I'll probably be doing this scenario. I think it'll be my first naval bat rep. So look forward to that, folks. Okay, talk to you real soon. Thanks a lot. Hope you enjoyed. Just take one last look. This time we've got some smoke going on there. Here's the Japanese making their approach, taking some hits. We got the Japanese ships taking defensive measures. Okay, folks, stay tuned. The battle will commence.